Hello, and thank you for joining us on Axe's official YouTube channel. My name is Michael Birch, and I am Axe Gay Men's Community Educator and Resource Coordinator. What you're about to watch is an edited community health forum recorded on December the 17th, 2020, about HIV meds. Please be mindful that any information presented here is only as current as of that date. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, ACT has gone digital and is now offering our Community Health Forum series online via Zoom webinar. For more information about how you can watch our forums live, suggest a future topic, give feedback, or ask questions, email me at mbirch at actoronto.org. As always, ACT would like to thank our sponsors, Viv Healthcare, Merck, Gilead, and The Village Pharmacy. Without their generous support, we could not bring you these forums. I would also like to thank our presenter, Zahid. Lastly, for up-to-date information about ACT and our programming, please visit us online at www.actoronto.org or on any of our numerous socials. Thank you, enjoy this presentation, and don't forget to comment and subscribe below. Traditionally, we like to start off our community health forums with a PHA and a land acknowledgement. Um, I want to recognize that this land acknowledgement is specific to the Toronto area, and some of you might be joining us from outside of the city or outside of the province or maybe outside of the country, I don't know. Um, so as many of us are settlers on this land, it is our collective responsibility to pay respect and recognize that this land is the traditional territory of the Mississauga of the New Credit First Nations, and we are here because this land was occupied. It is our collective responsibility to recognize our colonial histories and present day implications and to honor, protect, and sustain this land. Also central to the successes we have achieved has been the greater involvement and meaningful engagement of people living with HIV who continue to share their lives, experiences, and passion in the fight against HIV. We are indebted to the millions of people living with HIV from our past, our present, and our future. So at this point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pass it over to Saheed and welcome our presenter, Saheed, uh, into uh, to, to, into the forum. Welcome, Saheed. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you all for attending. And uh, we'll get started with the uh, presentation right now. Today's presentation is on how to make your HIV medications easier to take and how to feel better than ever. Um, the agenda for this presentation uh, is uh, we have a few things to discuss. Uh, the intersection of COVID-19 and HIV. I thought uh, we'll uh, have some new information on that. Um, the case for taking your medications every day. Uh, common concerns of being on HIV medication and tips and tools for making them easier to manage. Um, what's new in HIV treatment and what's new at the Village Pharmacy? We'll have the Q&A afterwards and Michael will moderate that. So COVID-19 and HIV. A uh, fair amount of research about HIV and COVID-19 has been released recently. The most relevant of these studies comes from New York City, San Francisco, the UK, and Spain. While there are some differences and the research is ongoing and it's early, generally speaking, we can draw three conclusions from the research. People living with HIV are not at higher risk of contracting COVID-19 than the rest of the population. That means they're not at high risk of getting infected. People with HIV are more likely to be hospitalized for complications related to COVID-19 than others, and especially those who have lower CD4 counts. CD4 cells are part of your immune system. Some research studies have found that people with HIV plus other health conditions like heart disease, diabetes, et cetera, may be at more risk for severe outcomes like hospitalization. In, uh, so there was a study um, infectious clinical diseases in September, actually of this year, uh, 286 people with HIV and COVID across the US um, were looked at. 164 of them or 
were admitted to hospital between April 1st and July 1st, 2020. 30% had severe outcomes, like they were on a, in an ICU or, or had a ventilator. And um, people with CD4 counts below 200, 200 cells, um, resulted in a three times higher risk of hospitalization compared with those with uh, CD4 counts above 500. This was even though 94% of patients were on HIV tre treatment and most were suppressed. Two studies from the UK showed that factors such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity are risk factors for severe COVID outcomes. 86% of people with HIV and COVID-19 had other health conditions. People with three or more other health conditions were, th were three and a half times more likely to be hospitalized and five times more likely to have severe outcome than the general population. So these are concerning results. Age is by far the biggest risk factor for serious illness and death when it comes to COVID-19. The risk starts increasing at around age 50 and is even higher for men. This is for the general population, not just HIV uh, PHAs. When you layer on HIV to this risk factor and adjust for other underlying health conditions, the risk for illness, severe illness gets increased. So what does this mean for you? Wear a good quality mask when you go out. These uh, surgical masks are cheaper now and they have um, a better layer inside to protect you. So uh, I would suggest using those in a high risk environment if you're going out to the grocery store or the pharmacy or anywhere else that's indoors. Um, follow your public health guidelines, um, maintain social distance, avoid gather, large gatherings and take care of your health. Take your medication, exercise, eat well, and stay in touch with uh, friends and family as much as possible, virtually as much as possible. So the case for taking your meds every day. A depressed immune response, that is a low CD4 count, sometimes CD4 is also called T4 cells, that can increase the risk of severe COVID-19 outcomes. Some people don't know their CD4 count, but most people with HIV do. Uh, it's been a common figure that's given to people along with their viral load. So ideally you want your CD4 count to be as high as possible and your viral load to be as low as possible or undetectable. The best thing you can do if you have a lower CD4 count is to take the public health recommendation seriously and stay on your medication every day uh, to avoid, uh, to maintain a healthy immune system. Another benefit of taking your medications every day is preventing uh, drug resistance. Mutations are very common in HIV. This is because HIV replicates or reproduces itself at an, a rapid rate and does not contain the proteins needed to correct the mistakes it makes. When HIV treatment does not result in adequate viral suppression, meaning doesn't push the virus in the blood low enough, HIV can reproduce more freely and accumulate more mutations. These mutations can make the virus, make your virus resistant to the medications you're on. Fortunately, the newer HIV medications are less likely to produce drug resistance than the older ones. Today's HIV treatments work really well. Once common, HIV drug resistance has become an uncommon thing for patients taking modern medica medications daily. Viral suppression. So I'm sure you've heard this term, U equals U. It, undetectable equals untransmissible, transmittable. It's a bit hard to say. But basically it means if your virus cannot be detected by the lab in your blood, 
that means you're undetectable. And if you're undetectable, you cannot transmit HIV to a sexual partner. That's one of the, uh, one of the a big benefit of uh, taking your medications every day. HIV, um, HIV cannot transmit, if, even if you don't use a condom to a sexual partner, if you're undetectable. Essentially with controlled HIV, you benefit by being healthier and your partners and the community benefit because you're doing your part to prevent the spread of HIV. So let's go over some small, some common concerns of being on HIV medication and maybe some tips and tools for making them easier to manage. A common concern, a change in routine. COVID-19 has meant that I'm working from home, I have different shifts, I may be unemployed, or I have changes in my family responsibility, my kids are around more. Um, my usual routine is out the window. And when that happens, um, people start forgetting to take their medication. This is very common and well known. The latest research on forming new habits, emphasizing linking the habit you want to make, taking your medication, to something you already do every day at the same time. You can also download a medication reminder app or say set a daily alarm on your phone. There are lots of medication reminder apps on the market. My, ther my therapy and MediSafe are two good options. Um, and try to link taking your medication to something that you do every day in your new COVID life. Like if you're not getting up in, in the morning going to work, maybe link it to eating breakfast or um, taking it right uh, before you sit down to watch TV. Another concern during COVID is decreased income. I may have lost my job or my health insurance with it, or my hours got cut back. I'm having trouble with my copay. The Trillium drug program um, can help with this. It can supplement your own private insurance. It can be your primary insurance. Uh, if you have insurance, but are have a trouble, have, having trouble cover the copays, there are some um, copay assistance cards available from the pharmaceutical companies that make HIV medications that can help you pay for your uh, out-of-pocket expenses. If you're interested, just call or email me at the Village Pharmacy and I can take you through it. Treatment fatigue. This has existed for decades. And, um, you know, HIV is a lifelong condition and people with HIV are living longer lives, healthier lives. And, um, uh, but they, they, to do that, they need to take their meds every day. If you're finding it particularly hard right now, I encourage you to reach out. ACT has um, virtual mental health counseling. You can talk to your doctor about getting mental health support. Um, there are supports available at the 519. Uh, we'll have some uh, helpful resources um, at the end of this presentation and we'll, and we'll also post them on our uh, social media channels. Try to get outside. I know it's hard in the cold in the winter but um, just walking in a green space or open air has been proven to improve your mood. Um, take vitamin D, especially in the winter, uh, one or 2000 units per day may help. Um, and um, try to uh, work out and get some exercise every day. Another common concern is there are just too many pills and it's confusing and annoying and I don't wanna deal with it every day. I have a lot of clients to, um, who are on weekly blister packs or monthly blister packs. They find it helpful. It keeps track of their doses. Did I take my pills or not today? You can just look and see. It takes the frustration out. And sometimes, you know, even though you can organize your own pills and you're perfectly capable of doing it, 
mentally it's uh, it, it'll give you it can give you a break to have someone else organize it for you. So you can speak to us about it uh, about that if you like, uh, or speak to any pharmacist about it. Another concern is side effects. Well, side effects are rare. Um, most people who are on HIV drugs never have a side effect. That's uh, something that uh, you know, we don't emphasize enough, but it's still possible to have side effects. Talk to your pharmacist if you think you're having a tough time with your meds. Uh, people tell us a lot and they tell us uh, what they're experiencing, experiencing and how they dealt with it. So I'm learning too. I've learned a lot over the years and maybe I can share something with you. There could be an interaction between your prescription drugs and your vitamins or your recreational drugs, and that could be causing the side effects too. So we have software that we can enter uh, all your medications and drugs and vitamins into and do a drug interaction analysis. And that uh, may help um, prevent or avoid side effects. Sometimes just taking the meds at a different time, taking them with food, um, will help. So just uh, bring it up with your doctor or your pharmacist if you're having trouble and um, we'll try to find solutions for you. Delayed refills. I've seen this before and much more during COVID. Um, people are late getting their refills, which, you know, probably means uh, that they're not taking their medications every day. So um, if that's happening, it's okay and it's solvable. Um, so you just have to uh, try to make a new routine, have a discussion with your pharmacist uh, about um, how to change things up. Maybe you need a change in medication. Maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you just need a free pill box, which we give out to our clients. And there's no judgment and just please uh, ask for help. All right, so what's new in HIV treatment? Cabinuva. This is very exciting news. It's um, Cabinuva is a long lasting injectable HIV treatment. It's the first injection approved as a full regimen for use in Canada. It contains two two drugs, cabotegravir and rilpivirine, a little hard to say. Um, it's injected once a month uh, by a nurse um, in the buttocks, the gluteal muscles, one drug in the left side and one drug in the right side. And it's recommended for use by people who are already on HIV treatment and who are, um, have uh, undetectable viral loads. Well, the way it works is um, uh, you start taking the pills, cabotegravir and ropivirine tablets for a month. And as long as you're not allergic to it and um, you don't have an, um, any side effects, then uh, you can start getting the injections on the last day of that first month. And then, you know, th every 30 days thereafter, you come into the injection site, either your doctor's office or the pharmacy, if they have a private room and um, you get it injected by a nurse. And there's some flexibility. You can be up to seven days early or late to get the injection. Um, it's very new. So it is covered by some private insurances already, but not by the Ontario Drug plan Benefit Plan. That's the plan, ODB is the plan that is basically for people with Trillium or ODSB or senior citizens. And the other relatively new um, item in HIV treatment is the two-in-one single tablet regimens. So we're all familiar with the three-in-one tablets like Atripla and Bictarvi and Genvoya. Um, well, now uh, studies have shown that two-in-one treatments can work too. So um, uh, Dovato and Jaluka are both um, uh, two-in-one treatments. There's one tablet once a day. Instead of three drugs, you're getting two. 
So if you're have, you know, can't tolerate that third drug, these are perhaps good options for you. Um, there's no need to switch your current therapy if you're doing fine. But uh, if you're on multiple HIV pills or are having some side effects, it's not a bad idea to bring these up to your doctor and have a discussion about it. Um, and by the way, they're both covered by the Ontario Drug Benefit Plan. So what's new at the Village Pharmacy? Well, we have our two locations now, our traditional location on Young, on Church, and now our new location beside ACT on, on Young Street, 535 Young Street. It's fully wheelchair accessible, and we've got a private counseling room. Um, we offer free delivery and uh, curbside pickup. Um, we, we are a Cabinuva, certified Cabinuva injection site. Um, so we've already got a patient on it and, um, we are excited to see more. Um, we've got, uh, the HIV, we do the HIV rapid test. That's the antibody test, uh, the finger prick test. And, uh, we have, uh, we provide that service for free because we have funding from the ministry of health to, uh, to do that until May, 2021. Um, so you can feel free to follow us on uh, the various social media platforms and check out our website at thevillagepharmacy.ca. And these are some resources that may be helpful. We'll post them on social media. And um, uh, thank you very much. And uh, please get in touch anytime. So I wasn't seeing any questions, but I was curious, Sahid, during your presentation, did I hear you say that you've already, you already have a patient who's taking injectable uh, antiretroviral therapy? Yes. So um, he has started the tablets, um, the two pills a day, and he's going to get the injection in January. Uh, so, wow. so we haven't actually, uh, yeah, but uh, he's ready to do it. Nice. I, yeah. you know, it's, it's really interesting. So I was saying in the chat window while you were presenting that in July, we did a community health forum on this, on this topic on injectable art. And we had uh, Dr. Sharon Walmsley come and speak um, uh, to us about the realities of injectable therapy. And um, it's really exciting to hear that you are sort of a registered space. I didn't, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that there was sort of a registration that was involved in being able to provide that service. So is that something that the pharmacy has to apply for and that people should be checking to see if their local pharmacy can provide that service to them? Yeah. So most pharmacies won't be registered spaces. Um, uh, you have to have a private room available. You have to have, okay. you know, patients on Cabinuva or likely to be on Cabinuva. And um, uh, so Viv will send a nurse uh, into the space uh, and um, and inject the patient. The whole process is we allot an hour for it, but it shouldn't take a full hour. And um, so, yeah, uh, they if people are interested in um, in uh, looking into injectable HIV treatments, uh, their their doctor would probably be the best resource in terms of uh, asking about it. Uh, they can ask me about it, and they can. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a registration of places, uh, you know, where you can't look online and see what pharmacies are, do have it. So a few do downtown, but not many. Um, assuming that it's covered by my insurance, I'm very excited to switch <laughs> uh, to injectables. Yes. Uh, so that's really exciting to hear that that's a service that you're offering. It was very interesting in conversations with community health forum attendees um, prior to um, the July uh, forum, when we were discussing this topic, the room seemed really split on mm. how comfortable they felt uh, receiving a needle. But I'm just like, hey, stick it in me. If that means I don't have to remember to take that, that pill every day, like what a gift that would be for me personally. I've had a few clients tell me that they're in, they are interested. I was surprised. I thought, you know, uh, people would be hesitant, especially during COVID, you know, mm -hmm. you, you obviously it takes close contact to get an injection. 
Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it definitely would improve adherence for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I believe I heard you say that you offer, did you say you offer free pill organizers or yeah. blister packs? I've always, uh, yeah, we've always offered the free blister packs, you know, the, the seven day blister packs. And, and so that's just where you pop it out. Yeah. That's right. Where you pop and it then out, yeah. you also do containers like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday containers. Yeah. I'll just give those to clients who are on one or two or three pills a day and perhaps just give, give them that no charge and help them sort of be more adherent to their medications. That's awesome. Um, That's very generous yeah. of you because I wish I known that I went out and I bought one <laughs> not too long ago. So yeah. uh, when it breaks, yeah. you can ask me for another one. I will. I'll <laughs> smash it tonight when I get home and then I'll show up at your door. Um, Anytime. So has, does anyone else have any questions perhaps uh, related to Zahid's presentation or perhaps just general questions about ACT and our services. We are currently close to the public. You will notice that I am in my office, but we are close to the general public uh, and we are working at a reduced, uh, with a reduced staff uh, here at the office. We are providing some services through curbside. Um, and, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me at M. Birch at actoronto.org. And I'm just typing my email address into the chat function. And uh, once again, thank you just Zahid for participating in the Village Pharmacy. You guys are amazing. Um, I, you know, I access services through PWA and uh, you guys donate free multivitamins, um, which I always take advantage of. I really appreciate that service. Uh, you guys have just been really good to act and you've been really good to the community and I'm excited you've got a second location. And I think I forgot to mention that you can pick up free condoms and lube yes. at both village locations. Yes. Um, so anytime you're walking by, if you just want to pop in, I think there's a bowl at both locations on the counter. One's on the counter at, uh, at Young Street and Church Street. You can just uh, steal it from like just outside the door even. Yeah. Uh, so don't be shy, steal it. And you're not stealing, you're taking. Uh, that's what it's there for. And um, we just really appreciate you being part of that program as well. So thank you for helping us get prophylactics into people's hands, especially during this time. My uh, pleasure. My very pleasure. appreciated. And I and appreciate all, all that you guys are all doing too.